Hello, welcome everyone to Popular Lessons YouTube channel. This is lesson IGCSE ICT Chapter 1 Types and Components of Computer Systems. Hardware and Software There are two main components of any computer system hardware and software. So, hardware is the physical part of a computer that are tangible which means you can touch software software is the part which you can't touch so intangible or you can say totally opposite of hardware it is a set of instructions for a computer to make perform certain specific operation hardware talking about hardware hardwares are divided into two parts or two categories the first one is external hardware and the second one is internal hardware so what are internal hardwares? They are the hardwares that are present inside a computer system. For an example, motherboard, central processing unit or CPU, random access memory RAM, read-only memory ROM, graphic card, sound card, network, network interface card, NIC, internal storage devices. These days you can find the external graphic cards as well. So, what are these external hardwares? They are the hardwares that we can plug in from outside the system. So we are plugged something in, into the system from outside is known as external hardwares. For an example, your keyboard, mouse, camera, monitor, printer, plotter, scanner and speaker are examples of external hardware. So hardwares again has divided into two parts input devices and output devices so input devices are the devices that we are using to input or to command to the system output devices are the devices that we can obtain and output from the system or the from the computer so what are the softwares softwares a set of rules or the instructions to perform something Software also has two categories, application software and system softwares. Application softwares are the ones that let you do your day-to-day -day tasks on the computer. Application software needs the operating system to be work. So like there should be a, an operating system in order the application softwares to work. So system softwares are the softwares that are essential for the computer to keep working and it is the platform to all other softwares to run. So operating system is a system software. So giving an example of application softwares, you can have word processing softwares, spreadsheet, database, apps and applets, video editing, audio, audio editing, graphic editing softwares, or com and computer aided design, or AKA CAD programs. Talking about system softwares and giving examples are compilers, linkers, device drivers, operating systems, and utilities. So what are these systems uh, softwares? Like compiler, what is it? A computer program that converts a source code into a language that can be understood by a computer. Like compiler do take the high level programming language uh, codes which is known as source codes and converted them into a very understandable uh, form for computers known as object code what is the linker linker is a computer program that takes file generated by a compiler and then combines them into a single file that can be executed device driver a software that enables one or more hardware devices to communicate with the computer's operating system. These are the softwares that you are installing or downloading when you are going to connect a printer or, this or a scanner to your computer system. So talking about main components of computer system, there are three parts. Input devices, output devices and secondary storage devices. Giving example of input devices, keyboard, mouse, camera, microphone, sensor, and scan. Out, output devices can be monitor, printer, speaker, project, and plotter. 
Secondary storage devices can be hard disk, solid state drive, or pen drives. So these internal hardware has four key components. The first one is central processing unit or the CPU. Second one is internal hard disk or solid state drive. So these internal hard disks have moving parts. They are also known as HDD. And solid state drives has no moving parts in it. And they are also known as SDD. And in the modern day computers, most of the computers that are releasing uh, to the modern world has solid state drives. And the third one is random access memory or RAM. Or, and the fourth one is read only memory ROM. So what does this CPU means or CPU does? Part of a computer which interprets and executes the commands from the computer hardware and software. These CPUs are in, can be found in modern day devices as microprocessors. And then what is RAM? Here is the place where data is temporarily stored when running application. We say RAM is versatile, which means when you turn your computer off, everything which, is, which was stored on the RAM going to be erased. When you are turning the computer on once again or boot up the computer, you won't find the data that you were previously open. The ROM. ROM is storing data permanently that are essential to configuration of the computer system. For an example, when the computer is boot up or when the computer is, is turning on, the ROM will send the program file or the program or the signal to the program or to the hardware to load the operating system and therefore ROM has very small storage capacity which uh, can only read operating systems it allows the user to communicate with the system so the operating system is the place or the uh, platform to interact with the computer system so what are the functions of operating system it controls the operation of input output and storage devices it also supervising the loading running and storage of application program dealing with errors in application softwares maintaining the security of whole computer system and it also maintain a log we can also call it as a computer log a detail about computer usage and the computer's hardware usage by the system and as i mentioned above it allows the user and system to communicate each other when you are communicating with each other you are interacting with the computer so to interact with the computer there are several me methods there are four types of user interfaces so command line interface, graphical user interface, dialog based user interface, gesture based user interface. These are the four types of user interfaces or the ways that user and the system can communicate. So talking and explaining about these user interfaces. First command line interface. It requires the user to type in instructions or commands. So in order to type in instructions or the commands, user has to learn, learn all the commands in order to interact. Otherwise, you won't be able to use. These days, uh, you can't find many uh, of command line interfaces, but mostly this user interface is used by technicians and computer programmers, computer analysts, and those people. So graphical user interface. This is the interface that we are currently used in modern day most of the computers. For an example of graphical user interface uh, using operating systems are Macintosh and Windows. User can interact with the system by clicking onto icons and pictures and symbols. 
Graphical user interface has a technology named VIMP or VIMP, which is standard for Windows icon and pointing device. So you just have to point onto the thing that you need and you can gain the results. So it is very, very easy to use compared to any other uh, interfaces. Next, we have dialog based user interface. It uses human voice to interact with the system. Very easy to interact even for disabled people. So this allows the disabled people to uh, communicate with the computer. And giving examples of these dialog based user interface applications are Google Now, Amazon Alexa, Apple Siri and Microsoft Cortana. Gesture based user interface. It rely on moving hands, head or even the feet. It uses techniques like computer vision and image processing. Gesture based user interfaces are mostly used in games these days. Like VR games are integrated with these user interfaces. Next, let's talk about types of computers. There are several types of computers. And those computers are divided into two separate parts. For an example, desktop computers and mobile computers. So as the name suggests, desktop computers are the computers that are made up of separate monitor, keyboard, mouse and processor unit. So they have separate parts, which means you can't carry it into another place, which is not portable and you will have to keep it in a one place and you can use it. And then we have mobile computers. As the name itself suggests mobile, which means very portable or more portable than the desktop computers. Giving example of mobile computers can be laptop computers, smartphone, tablets and phablets. Wonder what is phablets, right? Phablets is the smartphone and tablet combined together. Or like these days you can find many foldable devices for an example Samsung Fold Fold and the Google Folding the smartphone. So those things are called as phablets. Next we have arrived at the last topic of this IGCSE ICT Unit 1 which is Emerging Technologies. These are the technologies that are still in development stage and trying to reach their maximum power or the full potential of this. So one of the most famous emerging technologies these days is artificial intelligence. A machine which is capable of doing tasks with its own and has capabilities to think. Simply, they are trying to replicate how human think, how hum human get emotional. So that is the basic target of artificial intelligence. And then we have augmented reality. It allows user to experience the relationship between digital and physical world. Virtual information and objects are overlaid onto real world situation. Can experience the AR world through special goggles or via smartphone screens. For an example, Google glasses were invented with the use of augmented reality. But I think due to some issues in it, they stopped it. But we, we may able to experience it one day in the future. Have you ever played the game Pokemon Go? It is an example of uh, using AR in gaming, in gaming technology. So next one is virtual reality or we can also known as VR. It, it has ability to take the user out of the real world environment into a virtual digital environment. And in order to experience virtual reality, user must wear a VR headset, VR headset. And virtual reality is fully immersed in a simulated digital world while augmented reality is partially immersed in digital world. Like in augmented reality, you can find half real life 
but inside the real life you can uh, see through a glass or a smartphone screen the augmented digital reality in virtual reality it is fully immersed in, into a digital world which means you can't experience the real world while you are experiencing the digital world so we have reached to the end of our video and please consider subscribing and liking our video if the video was knowledgeable and helpful for your IGCSC and make sure to leave a comment about your ideas about this video and this video is uh, by popular lessons thank you for watching see you in another video in the future thank you